Well, I've done it. I've reviewed every single Treehouse of Horror segment to date. You know, I should feel relieved. And yet, I can't stop thinking about Halloween anthology specials. I think I need to take a look at one more this year, just to get it out of my system. One that has enough episodes to make a substantial video about it, but not as meaty as Treehouse of Horror. I'd say about six specials is a good cutoff. Oh, and I'd want it to be a show with a tight ensemble of characters. Those kinds of shows are always a blast. And I mean, if you can get Mark Hamill in there, that's just icing on the cake. I just want a regular show. You know? You might not know this about me, but I love regular show. It's tightly knit ensemble of characters, it's strong but not overbearing 80s roots, it's smart use of licensed music, and of course its most notable feature, episodes that start out with mundane premises only for things to get completely derailed and insane by the second act. Lots of episodes in the series follow a similar format, with the plot taking a surreal twist. But today we're going to focus on the show's Halloween specials, entitled Terror Tales of the Park. This Halloween tradition started in season 3 and was a staple of the show up until its last season in 2017, spawning a total of 6 specials. Each special has a very similar setup. It's Halloween, and the park crew find themselves sharing scary stories with one another, whether it be its own separate thing, or a way to pass the time during something else they're doing. These episodes are 22 minutes each, and most of them have three stories, with the first half having two shorter stories, and the second half having a larger story. I remember liking these a lot when they first aired, and I remember them being pretty popular, too. I always saw them as a sort of worthy successor to Simpsons Treehouse of Horrors. Even when I'm not talking about them, I find a way to bring them up. And hey, I'll give regular show this. Unlike Treehouse of Horror, which started as scary stories being told by kids in a treehouse, and kind of just turned into a spooky shorts that are spooky but not really towards the end episode, throughout all the specials, Terror Tales of the Park stuck to the concept of scary stories being told the whole time. It's kind of iffy in 5, but I think it still counts. But re-watching these specials, as well as binging the rest of the series, while I still do enjoy them a lot, I've started to realize something that I don't think crossed my mind when watching the series for the first time. What's the point of having these episodes in this format? I'm not saying I don't enjoy the spooky story format, albeit it might be a little overplayed in media nowadays. I'm more so pointing out the reasoning behind the spooky story format being used so much. It allows shows to tell a more surreal and scary story because they're formatted as non-canonical stories. This rings even more true with animation, as it allows the animators to get all freaky deaky with the visual storytelling that they show to us. The main takeaway from this is that it allows shows to be a lot more surreal and spooky with its storytelling. But with a show like Regular Show, that thrives in its surrealism from mundane plot structures, what exactly is the benefit of utilizing this structure? Let's take a look once again at The Simpsons. The average episode is a very grounded take on an animated family. At least in the beginning, so let's focus on that. With these Treehouse of Horror episodes, it allows the show to become a lot more surreal and experimental because these are just stories being told, and they have no actual effect on world building and lore, acting as more of fun one-off episodes. But now let's hop back to regular show. What does the show have to gain from utilizing this storytelling structure? Is it to be surreal? Well, I doubt it, since the show is already extremely surreal in like 95% of the episodes. Is it to be as scary as a TV PGV rating will allow you to be? Maybe, but even if that was the crew's intent, I'm doubting that as well, since there are plenty of other regular show episodes that try their hand at a horror concept. In order to see exactly what regular show has to offer, let's take a quick look at each of these specials back to back and see if there's a pattern or even some unique aspects that make this format worthwhile. Before we get into that though, I just want to mention that I'm going to be a bit critical in this section, but don't take that as me not liking these episodes because far from it, I actually really enjoy them. But we're taking a look at them from a critical standpoint in comparison to the rest of the series. I feel like I have to say that, or else I'm going to be getting a lot of comments that state I hate the specials, when I really don't. <laughs> Give me candy, lady! <laughs> oh man! The first Terror Tale special is probably the simplest of them all. Unlike the other specials, there isn't an overarching story tying these stories together. Instead, the plot is just them telling these stories. 
Heck, we don't even see them telling stories until the end of the first story. This is the weakest overarching story out of all the specials. I mean, by default, of course. The first story is Pops' story, and it's probably the weakest of the bunch. It revolves around a doll that likes to draw on people's faces, and then it does, and then they destroy it. Credit where credit is due, it is a pretty funny segment, and it makes sense for Pops to tell a relatively tame story. It falls within his character, after all. There's really nothing here. I want to focus more on the other two segments, as they actually introduce something that not only becomes a staple of the Terror Tale specials, but also something that they could not offer in the main canon of the show itself. Kind of. The next segment is Muscle Man's story, where we see him and High Five Ghost find a rundown RV and attempt to crash it into the crash pit, only for ghosts of the band that died in the RV to come back and trap them in the RV. The last segment, and the one that gets the bulk of the runtime, is dedicated to Rigby's story, where he gets cursed by a wizard and becomes a house. To be honest, I'm not a huge fan of Muscle Man's story. This was like early season three, where his character wasn't as fleshed out as it became later on. But I paired these two up because of the similar trait that they share. Both segments end with the main characters getting killed off. The Muscle Man story ends with him and Fives crashing into the pit, and then they both die and become ghosts. Or just Muscle Man, I guess? Does Fives die in this? I don't know. It wasn't that good. But the house one. Oh boy, this one's a slaughterhouse. You have your tamer deaths, with Pops being shoved into a closet and the closet disappearing. Or even Rigby's death of being crushed by a giant egg. Then there's your deaths that get a bit more macabre, like Skip's getting roasted in the chimney and Benson getting flushed down the toilet. Then you get into the really gruesome stuff. Five's getting turned into fucking milk, basically, and Mordecai getting decapitated. And if you think that's nuts, I've saved the best for last. I'm just gonna let this clip speak for itself. I told you I was ripped. This, right here, this one clip, is peak terror tales, and will forever be ingrained within my mind whenever people mention it. I know people are constantly like, Oh my god, he's bleeding! How did they get away with that in a kid's cartoon? To the point where it sort of loses its meaning. But here, I mean, the guy's skin is ripped off for fuck's sake. Even taking into account regular shows target audience is skewed towards older teenagers and young adults, this still boggles my mind that they were able to get away with this. Like, you can see his muscles and his tendons, and it's just, it's amazing. In an interview with J.G. Quintel, the creator of the show, he said, For the Halloween episodes, we try to push what we can do normally. And it's kind of hard, because normally, regular show tends to go surreal anyway. He also mentioned that the crew wanted to kill off at least one of the main cast in every segment, and I think that's really smart. It's a way for regular show to be unique with its Halloween storytelling, since like I mentioned, these stories have no effect on the main canon, so they can get away with whatever. Not to say that the death of a main character doesn't happen every once in a while in the main canon, because it does, but they always find a way to bring the character back to life. And based on the deaths we saw in this last segment, I'm really looking forward to what we get in future segments. Are there any better deaths, or at the very least, deaths that come even close to this segment's deaths? No. This is the first Terror Tales with an overarching story. The park crew is driving to a Halloween party, and to pass the time, they tell scary stories. The episode also ends with all the main characters dying in a car crash, which is an interesting way to end the episode given that this doesn't happen within a story. It's also worth mentioning that there was an alternate ending planned for this episode that was way more gruesome than the ending we got. Not quite as gruesome as the last segment from the first special, but pretty close. I don't really want to spoil it, so if you're interested in seeing this alternate ending, I put a link to the storyboards in the description for you to check out. Anyways, on to the first segment, Mordecai's story, about his dead uncle. And it's bad. It's really bad. It's boring and lame and predictable from the very beginning. Man, these first segments seem to be just the worst, don't they? Up next, we actually have a bit of a change of pace, with Mordecai calling Margaret and Margaret telling the scary story. I actually quite enjoy this one. It's about Mordecai, Rigby, Margaret, and best girl Eileen taking a party bus to get to a monster movie premiere and the bus turns out to be rapidly aging everyone riding it until they turn into dust. The four are able to reverse the effects a bit too well, as now their age is rapidly decreasing. The segment ends with the now babyfied characters jumping off the bus, but not before fading from existence. It's not as gruesome as getting skinned alive, but I'd argue it's even more messed up the more you think about it. It's a real thinker of a short. It's a fun story with a dark ending, and uh, I like that a lot. The last segment is Benson's story, and while it's definitely entertaining, 
and not as weak as Mordecai's milk toast tail, it's pretty weak with its execution. It revolves around Mordecai and Rigby being tasked with wallpapering the whole inside of the house, and they hire some other guy to do it instead, only for it to turn out to be a trick and the guy to be a giant spider. I think my biggest problem with this is that I think it could have been just as easily a regular episode of the show. Hell, it kind of was already? The death also feels a bit shoehorned and forced in at the last minute. I don't know, it just doesn't feel earned and a bit lame in the long run. All in all, I would say this episode was a downgrade from its predecessor. The middle segment was good, but the last segment was just okay, and yet again, the first segment was really lame. Also, for some strange reason, they have this like weird retcon where Pops is afraid of scary stories, despite the fact that in the first one, he tells a scary story, and even when I watched it for the first time around, I thought the retcon was like dumb and not needed. That's all I have to say about Terror Tales 2. On to the next one. Will it surprise me and be better than the second? Yes, actually. It's like surprisingly a lot better than Terror Tales 2. Before we get into the good though, let's talk about the things I wasn't a fan of. For starters, it's nice to see the cameos from one-off and side characters from previous episodes, and it wasn't until seeing Thomas in his pizza costume that I really started to appreciate that almost every Terror Tales episode has the main cast dressing in different costumes that are sometimes really fun references. That being said, this overarching story is pretty lame. All it is is the crew telling scary stories, and the lamest one has to wear their costume until Thanksgiving, which is pretty brutal now that I think about it, but I'm still not a huge fan. The other thing I'm not a fan of, and you can probably see a pattern at this point, is once again, the first segment. I'll admit it's entertaining and interesting. It's Rigby's story that revolves around him finally getting a bed at the park, only for it to contain the remains of a dead convict that takes over the bed. While I think the ending is one of the funnier ones that we've seen from the show, the segment is too quick, and the possessed bed really comes into play way too late in the segment. I'm happy to report, however, that the next two segments are really, really good. The next story, Muscle Man's story, is probably one of, if not my favorite stories, of all the specials. It revolves around Mordecai, Rigby, Muscle Man, and Five smashing pumpkins the day after Halloween, when they come across a pumpkin patch with a pair of married scarecrows. They ignore the warnings and smash the wife scarecrow, and are about to smash the husband scarecrow, only for it to come alive, turn fives into a pumpkin, smash him, and collect his seeds. The rest of the segment actually turns into this really suspenseful chase throughout the pumpkin patch, with the scarecrow eventually catching and disposing of the others in the same way. This is a really great story that chooses to focus a lot more on horror than comedy, and I think it really pays off. The scarecrow monster is surprisingly effective, and the methods of death are creepy and unnerving. Definitely a top tier segment. The last story, a story told by Benson, isn't quite as good as the previous story, but it's still a really good segment. This story tells the tale of Jebediah Townhouse, a pilgrim that was 200 years ahead of his time, spouting one-liners from the 80s, who haunts the park house that very Halloween night. The guys decide to have a bet to see who can stay in the house the longest. Needless to say, Things do not end well for them, as one by one, they're picked off by Jebediah in some pretty creative ways. I think out of all the segments, this one does the best job blending horror and comedy. Like, it's a pretty creepy setup and execution, but the character of Jebediah is just so out there that it works surprisingly well in a comedic sense as well. And that's the end of Terror Tales 3. Like I said, it's leagues better than 2, despite having a weak first story, and I'd actually say it's on par with 1, which might seem weird given that it has two really good segments, but honestly, I don't think anything can top Rigby's story from Terror Tales 1. Let's move on to Terror Tales 4, where I'm sure the quality just keeps getting better and better. This one sucked! I have a good amount of things to say that I did not like about this one, so let's discuss what I did like, which isn't all that much. I think this episode actually has the best overarching story so far. It revolves around the biggest mystery of the series up to this point. Muscle Man's mom. The crew are all sick of hearing Muscle Man's mom jokes, so they want to meet the woman in person, and Muscle Man reluctantly agrees, but only if they tell scary stories on the way. It's a pretty entertaining setup, and I think the payoff is handled pretty well. The only other thing that I more so appreciate about this special than like isn't even related to the special at all. We're now in season six of the show, and as such, we're getting some story arcs and plot lines that span over numerous continuous episodes. And while I do like some of the storylines, it can get a bit tiring to watch those episodes back to back, 
So this is a nice pace breaker. Okay, now on to the bad. The first story is Pops' story and it's actually the worst story. It has to do with like a whole monster in the park and it's just, it is not fun and really dumb and a slog and everything about it just makes me really not like this at all. So this segment, it's bad. It's like, it's really, really bad. With this story, they begin to do this trend that I'm really not a fan of. And that's that they sort of start these stories in the middle. By that, I mean they start the stories with the characters already having exposure to the mysterious entity, so you don't really get to see these characters in the feeling of shock as to what's going on around them, and they've just accepted it. And for a show like Regular Show, that's really lame. It's a show about getting from the mundane to the surreal, so by skipping out on the mundane, you're basically stripping away half of its identity. Another thing this segment does that I really do not like, and it's something that happens more and more in other stories after this one, is the characters within the stories all act really out of character. This isn't anything new, we've seen it with the wallpaper story and the bed story, but this is probably the most offensive one so far. Why does Pops' story have these characters acting so mean and stupid? I just... Why? This makes no sense and it's dumb and I just... I want to stop talking about this story. I do not like it. The next story is not much better. It's Benson's story about how Mordecai and Rigby died. Oh great, we're starting mid-story again. Very happy about that. And now they're haunting the house and Benson thinks that the only way to get rid of them is to fire their ghosts. But it turns out that Benson really was the one who was dead the whole time. Ooh, spooky. Yeah, that's it. It's also lame that we never actually see how Mordecai and Rigby died. Benson just says they died trying to haunt the house for Halloween, which that, that doesn't even make any sense. Also, Benson's death is the only on-screen death we see in this whole episode, and it's really lame. This segment is also the start of another problem with some of the segments later on down the road that I'll talk about when I get to the next segment. The final segment is Rigby's story, and despite having arguably one of the best concepts, the execution is handled so poorly, and the majority of that is due to one thing that I'll touch upon a little later. Anyways, Mordecai, Rigby, CJ, and best girl Eileen get their hands on a cursed videotape entitled Triple Threat. They end up getting sucked into the videotape and have to make it through the movie in order to escape, and they do. The end. So the major thing that really drags down this segment, the thing that I had alluded to before, is how it tackles horror tropes. Instead of doing anything creative or unique with the horror tropes, they tackle them by just having them play out with no additional commentary. Why would you come to a mental asylum for a haircut? Well, my barber told me to meet him here. Hmm made sense at the time. Oh boy, that was sure funny. I hope there's another scene referencing this trope. Come on, Wyatt! What are you waiting for? He might not be trying to kill us. And I really need a haircut. Okay, I'm done with this segment now. This is by far the weakest terror tale special thus far. All of the stories told were just... truly awful. Honestly, I'm looking forward to Terror Tales 5 because I know it can't be as bad as this one. Right? I mean, I was kinda right. It's definitely better, but only slightly. This special actually does a good amount different from other Terror Tales specials so far. For starters, the overarching story revolves around one of those animatronic genies that tells fortunes. Only this one tells stories based on a person's wish, and that's how each story is portrayed. The second change is that instead of three stories being told, this time there are four stories. I don't like either of these changes. The whole Racky the Wishmaker thing is cool on paper, but it seems like a bit of a cop-out that the story isn't actually being told and is instead being projected only to the person who made the wish, minus the last story. One of the best parts that I haven't mentioned thus far is hearing everyone's reaction to a story, especially ones that they might not like, and this really detracts from that. And the four stories thing is just really pointless in my opinion. I was never a huge fan of the three story structure to begin with, since two of the stories got shafted, but at the very least, one of the stories get the full time allotted. With four stories, now every story is getting shafted. And the stories themselves are better than the last special, but not by a lot. The first two stories are actually especially weak. Benson's story about getting a puppet to motivate Mordecai and Rigby to work harder, only for the puppet to be alive the whole time and try to take over, is basically a worse version of Pops' doll story from the first Terror Tale special. At least that one had some funny moments. And speaking of Pops, his story is the worst of the bunch. Wow, I'm not shocked at all. 
So like the park crew is attending the trial of a werewolf only for the werewolf to attack Pops so that he becomes a werewolf and takes his place. And it has another one of those really bad and annoying out of character moments that I had mentioned from the whole story, except this one might be even worse. Luckily, the next two stories are a lot better, actually. High Five Ghost Story is next, and it's nice to see him tell his first story ever. It's nice to see him actually take the center stage at all. Anyways, this story revolves around him visiting his girlfriend in Prague, and so he takes the elevator to get to her apartment on the 36th floor. Needless to say, some spooky stuff happens. I won't go into too much detail because I really like this story a lot. It actually works on a horror level on two different levels. The first one, of course, being the spooky things that happen in the elevator, but the second one being having to be confined in a small space for a majority of the story. It works really well, and it actually manages to do something that Terror Tales hasn't been able to do since Terror Tales 3. Genuinely spook me. The final story is Rigby's story, and while the execution is very similar to the Scarecrow story from Terror Tales 3, I think it works quite effectively here for the most part. Mordecai and Rigby are out trick-or-treating when they get heckled by some popular kids who tell them that if they want to be cool, they have to take candy from the creepy house. They do and end up getting trapped by a witch who tricks them into eating chocolate-ized people, only for them to become chocolate as well. It's pretty fucked up, actually. And that's Terror Tales 5. Definitely better than 2 and 4, but nowhere near as good as 1 and 3. So it goes right in the middle. Let's move on to the last Terror Tales special and see if it's better than... Actually, you know what? I'm not doing this again. Let's just get into it. Terror Tales 6 takes place during the last season of the show, and as such, it has the main cast and best girl Eileen in space, and this applies to the Halloween special and its stories, too. It's actually quite interesting to see how they tackled what should have been a bit of a restraint, but in a way, I think it gave them some great new ideas, because this Terror Tales is surprisingly pretty good. Also, we're back to three stories again, which, thank God. The overarching story is admittedly a bit lame at first, it revolves around the crew telling scary stories to try and show their robot companion the meaning of fear. It really picks up in the second half, though, with their ship getting sucked into a black hole, and the whole thing ends with them not being able to escape in a cameo from Neil deGrasse Tyson, who eats their spaghettified bodies. That's certainly a way to end Terror Tales, I'll tell you that much. The first story comes from Skips, which is actually his first story in these specials. It revolves around the characters running out of gas and having to refuel on Fear Planet, where your greatest fears are manifested. You can probably tell how this one plays out. The characters have to endure their greatest fears in order to refuel the ship and make it out of there alive, with Benson and Skips actually biting the bullet. Seeing everyone's fears is pretty amusing. I like how while everyone else's fears are relatable, like Benson's fear of sharks and Pops' fear of the dark, Skips, being immortal, has a much more outlandish fear. Hey Skips, what are you afraid of? <gasps> so yeah, pretty great segment actually. The next story is told by best girl Eileen, and it's dumb and boring and a waste of a story set in space. It's about vampires, that's all I need to say. She may be the best girl, but she told a pretty bad story. The final story is told by Rigby, and this one actually pleasantly surprised me with the direction it took. In order to make enough space credits, the park needs to get a new roommate, and they find one in a xenomorph named Shannon. I thought this was going to turn into a horror story about Shannon killing off the entire park crew one by one, which would have been a pretty entertaining story. But they instead decide to go down the route of her being an awful roommate, which sounds like it would be much worse, but it's actually like 10 times better than what I thought it would be. I don't know, something about a lazy xenomorph is just really funny to me, and it actually plays well with the horror slash space trope in a fun and unique way. And with that, we have now finished every Terror Tale special. No, I'm not going to rank the segments. Okay, fine. Number 19, The Hole, Terror Tales 4. Number 18, Where Pops, Terror Tales 5. Number 17, Unfinished Business, Terror Tales 4. Number 16, King Size Candy Bars, Terror Tales 6. Number 15, Scary Movie Night, Terror Tales 4. Number 14, Payback, Terror Tales 2. Number 13, Mr. Bossman, Terror Tales 5. Number 12, Creepy Doll, Terror Tales 1. Number 11, Killer Bed, Terror Tales 3. Number 10, Death Metal Crash Pit, Terror Tales 1. Number 9, Wallpaper Man, Terror Tales 2. 
Number 8, Chocolate Tude, Terra Tales 5. Number 7, Party Bus, Terra Tales 2. Number 6, Fear Planet, Terra Tales 6. Number 5, Alien Roommate, Terra Tales 6. Number 4, Going Up, Terra Tales 5. Number 3, The Previous Owner, Terra Tales 3. Number 2, Jacked Up Jack o' Lantern, Terra Tales 3. And number 1, In the House, Terra Tales 1. Whew! After rewatching these specials again, it's interesting to see how Quintel and the crew were able to differentiate these specials from other regular show episodes, and how they were able to justify having this horror anthology story series. I mean, with some of them, they weren't able to really justify it. I mean, Terror Tales 4, who oh boy. But with the others, I think they were able to pull something decent off. That being said, let's address the title of this video, that being the big problem with Terror Tales as a whole. Is it able to differentiate its surrealism from the surrealism in the rest of the show? Honestly, I think the answer is no. While I do enjoy Terror Tales, I think that choosing to do a Halloween anthology series wasn't exactly the move that I would make for a show that's already one of the more surreal shows on TV. That being said, I think it mostly makes up for it with its over-the-top violence and deaths of the main characters that they couldn't really have gotten away with in the main canon of the show. And if that means more things like Skinned Muscle Man, I'll take it. Okay, one more time. I told you I was ripped. <laughs>